I can't be thinking like that already. I'm, you know, I was, I was 32 at the time. I was like, I can't already be thinking. Oh, it's just a load of noise. I don't want to listen to it. You know, I was just enjoying, you know, re-engaging with modern day music again because I've been out of the loop for ages. And then in 2017, me and my girlfriend uh, broke up in January and then I instantly kind of like went into a bit of a tailspin. And so I started doing the most recent thing that had brought me comfort or any, or any sort of enjoyment, which was reading these best of 2016 end of year lists in December. And I just didn't stop doing that until my life got better. So I did it for the rest of the year. I started feeling annoyed that I'd ignored it for so long and ignored modern day music and written it off and thought that it was trite and disposable and that bands only write good singles and not good albums. And you know, I felt a bit ashamed of my own ignorance around it all. There's all this great, amazing, exciting music that I was missing out on that I'd written off in a bit of an old man way and been like, oh, that's just, it's just noise, it's just, yeah, and all that. And like, I was like, I can't be thinking like that already. I'm, you know, I was, I was 32 at the time. I was like, I can't already be thinking, oh, it's just a load of noise, I don't want to listen to it. So like, I was really excited just to be like, also just engaged with stuff that's happening right now again. Which I think maybe in 2016, I'd started doing that a bit more politically, like a lot of us did, and suddenly, you know, suddenly you're like, oh, actually, I care about politics all of a sudden, and this is, I've been ignorant about this for too long, and now, you know, maybe everything that's going on now is because we've all been a bit too ignorant about things. And so, like, I was re-engaging with that, and then, yeah, doing it with music as well, is, it's made me do it with films more, and a whole bunch of stuff. So, like, you know, and just kind of wanting to talk about what's going on now rather than being like you know you kind of look back at all the golden eras of you know music or film and stuff like that you think, oh, I must have been great you know being alive then and getting to experience that all but some people were just like going ah it's rubbish and not paying attention to it and they missed out on this incredible thing and you know maybe some of us are at the moment you know I'm not ruling out ever mixing music and comedy together I think only if like that's the best way to serve the joke so if the joke is best done as a song then do it as a song, but otherwise doing a song for the sake of it or whatever. Also, I'm a drummer, so that, you know, I did a cowbell solo in a show once, so like, yeah, that's the closest I've come. And I guess this book is the closest that I've come by telling stories about music and stories about comedy mixed together. My iPod guy is called Michael Burdett. He supplies me with iPods. Michael is a, a, a man in his 50s who wrote the theme tune to Home's Under the Hammer. When he heard that the iPod Classic 160 gigabytes was getting uh, discontinued, he immediately went to his Argos. They let him look at their catalogues, uh, although they're not even that, but they're on, the, on their computers. And so he could see that how many iPod Classics they had, where they were, and most of them were in Ireland, and he's afraid of flying and afraid of going on boats. So he said he had to contact all of the Argoses in Ireland and send them money and buy them all up and buy all the iPod Classics and then keep them in their packaging. And so he has them all in his house and he sells them to people like me when we need them. I think there's advantages to all formats. And I so I love how, like, you know, I love the fact that I can get an iPod and put like all my music collection on it, put it on shuffle, make playlists out of it. There are albums, like there's an album that came out in 2016 by a band called King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard, which um, is an in infinite loop, so the last track loops back in on the first track, so you can just play it over and over, which you can never do with vinyl or CD or anything. I like the ritual of vinyl, I like having it in its, you know, it's, 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 that, that size is like the perfect, CD now just feels too small, even though I grew up with CDs, that's my era, it still feels like too small and tacky, whereas the vinyl still feels legit, like you've got the album. Um, and then a cassette's pretty cool too, but like I just don't see a situation where I'm gonna favor the sound of a cassette over any other format. So MP3s and vinyl, I think I still have quite a nice romantic relationship with, and uh, yeah, I think they're both great. Two of the bands in the book, there's uh, Karima Walker and um, Unblonde, uh, they both, their 2016 releases were exclusively on cassette and then they got re-released the next year on all formats, but that still counts as a... <laughs> now, the, the rule I had to make myself was that it has to have been originally released in 2016, so in whatever way. So like, you know, it was originally released on cassette, that's, that's, it's a 2016 release. If it had been originally released on cassette in 2015, I would not have counted it, even if it was re-released in 2016. Even though no one really set me those rules, I did them for myself for no reason, to give myself my life some order while I was having a breakdown. 